So what is Heroku? Heroku is a hosting platform. If you've never worked with Heroku before, and perhaps worked with some other more simpler, basic hosting platforms, what it provides might come as a bit of a surprise. So unlike other hosting platforms, it doesn't just give you an empty server and leave it all up to you to add all the software, add all the security updates that you need to run your application. Okay, it doesn't just give you an empty server. Heroku is more like getting a server to run your code, plus the people who set up the servers and the support staff to manage all the processes and all the servers so you, a developer, can focus on what you're good at developing instead of wasting your time managing servers and resources that it's not really your expertise. So if you need a server and a database, they give you a machine that runs your code and a database to store your data. They manage the database completely and you only pay for what you use. They have a generous free tier and it usually is enough to get you started, even launch a product for free, and only when your app becomes popular do you have to start paying for things. I love Heroku, I use them all the time. So the first thing you need to work with Heroku is you need an account. So, so you wanna go into it and click sign up. So just go ahead and create an account. They may ask for a credit card number and that's fine. They only, they're only asking that in case you start using resources that cost money. I already have an account on Heroku, so I'm just going to log in. So once you've logged in to Heroku or signed up to Heroku, you should see a dashboard like this now. You won't have all of these projects. These are just projects I've worked on in the past. What you want to do is you want to create your own project. So you click on New, and you want to create a new app. And let's give it a name. So let's call it Pars Server Codecraft Example. It does need to be something that's unique. And then if you want to, you can choose a location. So United States or Europe. Just choose the one that's closest, that's closest to you. The European one does have a slightly higher charge. So just, just take that into account. So I'm just going to create one in, in the United States. And let's create app. Okay, so now we've created the application. It's taken us to the application page. So it's got multiple tabs. We've got overview, resources, and deploy. Now deploy is the one we want to work on first. So how do we actually push our code to the Heroku servers? How we do that is we actually connect Heroku via Git. And to do that, we need to use the command line tool called Heroku. So the first thing to do is to go and install, download and install the Heroku tool belt. So if I just open that in another folder. So the Heroku tool belt is just the command line tool which you'll use to interact with your Heroku instance, with your Heroku application. So just find the platform that suits you. Mine's Mac OS X. Download. Once it's downloaded, double click the downloaded uh, application and just follow the instructions to install. Once that's installed, go into command prompt and type Heroku login. So let me open another tab. Just clear that and just type Heroku login. So once you type Heroku login, it'll ask you for your email and your password, put them in. It will store those credentials locally on your computer so that in the future when you type any commands with Heroku, you won't have to pass in your, your email address or your password. It's all stored locally on your computer. I've already done this. I'm not going to do it again. So I'm going to exit out of that. And then if you see, it's got some instructions for how to link your Heroku application to a new Git repository or how to link it to an existing Git repository. This is the one that we're going to use because we already have an existing Git repository. So we're just going to copy this command here. We're going to go back into our terminal and we're going to go into our folder where we have our code. It's going to clear and we'll just type that command in. And that's it. What this does is it sets a target called Heroku in the settings for Git for our project 
so that then if we push our code to Heroku, it's going to push it to, well, essentially Heroku. And once our code gets pushed to Heroku, Heroku will then go through all the process of rebuilding all of our code, putting it on the servers and relaunching our servers for us. So it's, it's a really neat and quick way to get this done. So once it's linked, you just type git push Heroku master. So what this is going to do is it's going to push the master branch of our local code to Heroku. Okay, press enter. And what you're seeing now is you're seeing logs from Heroku is saying that it's detected that it's a Node.js application. It's creating some environment variables to support it. It's then installing some of the binaries and, and Node which is going to need to, to run our application. And then it's installing now the dependencies which we need to run our application. And then it's done. So now if we go to the overview tab, you can see the latest activity, which includes my current deploy, which I did using the git push. But to actually use parse server, if you remember, we need to actually have a Mongo database. So we need to tell Heroku that our application needs a Mongo database. So we go to resources and we go to add-ons and let's just type in Mongo. So we want the MLab MongoDB and you can see it has a free version, but you know, as your application starts to scale, you can get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But we're just gonna start off with the free version. And then once you've selected it, just click provision. Okay, so now we've configured our application to use MongoDB and we have a, we have a free MongoDB database which we can use. Now I'm also going to add another one. I'm going to add Paper Trail, which I like to add to my Heroku applications. And Paper Trail just collects all of your logs into one place and gives your web interface to to have a look at them. So I find it very easy to use way of just quickly looking at all of your logs. So it'll, it'll also get the Mongo logs as well as your server logs. So again, just choose a plan that you want. It's got a free tier. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to click provision. And so later on in this course, I'm going to show you how to send emails from your Parse server, which it will send on certain situations, for instance, if you're trying to reset your password. So to do that, we need to add a service which lets you send emails. Now you can use a number of them, but the one we're going to use is called Mailgun. We're going to use Mailgun. So just again, select that. Again, it's got a free tier. So we still haven't spent any money yet. And those are the three add-ons that I want to use to support my application with a MongoDB database. We've got the service that sends email on our behalf, and we've got just something that collects all of our logs into one place. So now if we go back into the overview tab, you can see we've installed Mailgun, MongoDB, Paper Trail, and it should also say something here in a dyno formation. So it should say that we have a dyno called web, which is just the command node index.js. So a dyno is the server which is used to run your code, so our code itself. So to run past server, we, we would just run node index.js. If we then click on configure dynos, you can see that we're actually using here the free dynos. Now there's certain limitations on the free dynos. There's only a certain number of hours each month which you can use, which would which if you and if you go over those hours, then the dyno would spin down and you won't be able to use it. So really it's, it's pretty useful for just initially trying things out, it, even possibly like a soft launch. Um, if you don't expect your server to be running 24 hours, seven days a week, then even that might be fine. But as soon as you get to the point where you're gonna need some more guarantee of uptime, you, you'd wanna upgrade to a higher level. Now those cost money, but then it gives you servers that are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's up to you. We're just gonna to stick to the free dynos. So we're almost finished. The next thing we need to do is to configure our instance with private settings. So if you go into the settings page and then click reveal config variables. So this is how we customize our instance of parse server for just ourselves. So you can see here, we've got variables here, which is which Heroku added automatically from Mailgun. 
And you can see it's actually got private things there, things we don't want the world to see. So the password which Pass Server will use to connect to Mailgun, to connect to our instance of Mailgun. So any configuration variables we add here are going to be made available to our code when it's run inside Heroku. This is a great way of securing your application. Too many times I see people hard coding passwords and other private data in the code itself. But by using environment variables like we do with Heroku, it lets us do something like this. So you can see here, we do process.env cloud code main. So what this is saying is that if there's an environment variable called cloud code main, then use whatever value that environment variable contains. If it doesn't contain that, if it doesn't have an environment variable, then just use what's on the right hand side. So you can see here we've got app ID master server URL. So if app ID is an environment variable, use that. If it's not, then use the default my app ID. Same for master key, same for server URL. And you can see if we scroll down further on, there's a couple of other environment variables that you can use to configure your application. So we've got pars mount, which is the a URL where it, you can find pars on your server. Or you can even change the port which your pars server is going to run on. So what we want to do is we want to set up some of these environment variables on our Heroku instance. So let me just copy and paste that. So let's go back to the bottom here. So I'm going to type app ID, which is just a unique identifier for our application. And you can type it to whatever you want. I'm just going to use my app ID. It should not be something as simple as this. It should be something a lot more complex. Think of it like a password. So I'm going to add that one. I'm also going to add master key. There we go, master key. And again, my master key. When you're setting yours up, please set these up with a much, much stronger set of uh, values here. These treat, treat these as passwords. So please set them up with a, a nice, strong password. And the server URL we need, type that in here. Now what the server URL will be is the name of your project. In fact, you can find it here at the bottom. So the server URL is this one here. So the server URL is where your application will actually be hosted from. Now every Heroku application gets its own URL which is the name of your application .herokuapp.com. I'm going to show you in later lectures how to actually have your own custom domain name as well. But for now, let's just use this free Heroku URL, which we can use. Let me just take that. And the server URL, we want to have HTTP, probably S, yes. And then the full path of our application. So let's use HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then our Heroku URL, and just end it with a slash as well. And let's click Add there. And then let's leave it there. This is all we should really have to do to get our PAR server set up. So now to actually try it out, we just go to that domain, hit Enter, and there you go. Same as when we ran with localhost, it's now printing out this text on the screen, so you now know that you're Hero that your PAR server is now running on your Heroku instance. And unlike localhost, you now have a publicly available URL. So if you wanted to try this out on a device or different computers, you could then get access to your PAR server um, anywhere or from anywhere.